Now, bias is probably the biggest issue that we have with uh, AI at the moment. And, and I'm not talking about the bias, you know, the nub, the B that we had in, in our neuron. I'm talking about general bias of data. And bias, uh, the problem is, you know, uh, some time ago, there was a big debate in the US uh, around AI. And somebody said, well, you know, AI is biased. And somebody said, well, no, it's not true. How can AI be biased? It's basically just mass. And of course, both people were right. AI is just mass. It's correct. The bias is not in the mass. The bias is in the data that you feed to the mass. And two plus two equals four everywhere. That's clear. But the problem is that uh, when you have uh, invalid data, then it can lead to problem. And to illustrate that, I'd like to take an example. Some uh, years ago, um, data scientists decided to try an experiment where they would uh, train an AI model based on patient data and, and try to recognize or to predict if a patient was more at risk to get pneumonia uh, than another patient based on his history. And the model was predicting something really weird. It was predicting that uh, patients with asthma were less at risk to get pneumonia than patients without asthma, which of course for a human doctor doesn't quite make sense because if you have asthma already, you probably already have an affectation of your respiratory system and uh, you're probably more at risk to get it. But what was actually happening is that patients with asthma were more attentive to their own body and they were um, they were uh, going to the doctor earlier when they were feeling bad. And then the doctor would test and say, oh, you, you might have early signs of pneumonia. Let's treat that early. And then it didn't degenerate into, uh, into pneumonia, actually. Um, so basically, the data was correct, but there was this kind of bias that the problem is that the, the computer totally misunderstood the context of what was going on. And thankfully, a patient, uh, sorry, a human doctor was able to find that out and to say, all right, maybe we can fix it in the data. We know that it's not the case. So we are going to add some, uh, some risk factors for asthma patients, etc. Uh, that is, of course, quite complicated. But uh, most uh, importantly, uh, you know, the problem is what else did we miss in, uh, in the model? What, can we even trust that model? And it's going about patients' lives. And so what they decided to do eventually is that they said, no, no, we are going to question the whole model. We are not going to use that with actual patients. And they abandoned this experiment. So it's uh, an example to illustrate the problem with those AI models. And that can be very bad. So here, this is uh, an example of racial bias. Uh, I'll let you read that because I don't even want to say those words, but what happened is that uh, really there was a, a big problem and, and you can wonder why did um, the engineers here not find out the problem by test. And probably what happened is that they didn't even think of trying that case because most of the engineers who work on AI are white, uh, you know, pink like me, right? White like me and, and, and didn't even think of testing that, uh, that case. Uh, and so that can be a problem with racial um, racial features and of course that can be a big problem because uh, in certain cases it can even affect somebody's livelihood or somebody's life okay people can get maybe thrown into jail because they, they, the facial recognition system is unable uh, to uh, make sure that they are not uh, a criminal for example this kind of thing so that could be a big problem there is also of course gender bias uh, gender bias, uh, again, right, the machine learning workforce is 85% male like this. And so, of course, they don't really test uh, as a woman. <laughs> and so we need probably more emotional uh, intelligence here. Uh, the training data sets are biased and those training data sets are very expensive to produce, gathering the data, cleaning the data. This is very, very expensive to do. And so very often those biased data sets are reused. And so here we have a bad example where the AI sees a picture of a kitchen and associates it with a woman more than with a man, which for me, I love to cook. I, I feel very, uh, very uh, hurt by this uh, assertion here. Um, it's not an easy problem to solve. Bias is very complicated to solve because it's not a bug. The system actually works as intended. Uh, so you cannot go and fix the bug and there is no one solution fits all. There is no one thing that you can do which is going to fix the problem for everyone. And if you decide to go in your data set and remove the colon with the gender or with the race, it doesn't solve the problem. The bias is still there, except that you made it even harder to understand and to recognize. So it's not a, it's not a solution either. Uh, and if you try to treat the bias, for example, by oversampling women or oversampling uh, people of color, uh, then you add 
a, a different type of bias into your system. And so it's not easy either. What you need to do is really understand that your AI model is going to be biased, whatever you do, and to learn to recognize this bias and to treat it. Uh, what it means uh, concretely is that you need, first of all, you need to be fair to everyone when you, when you, um, when you test your data, when you gather your training data and your and your validation data and everything, but also you need to remain able to understand the predictions. Okay, in the case of the pneumonia, there was a human doctor who said that doesn't make sense. This asthma prediction doesn't make sense. Okay, you need to be able to understand the model, and of course this is very important, especially when models become more and more complex. That can be quite tricky. Um, you need to validate everything you do, validate your assumption, validate uh, your results uh, and, and always assume that something might go wrong because it probably will at the end. Uh, you need to watch the system and uh, collaboration is a good way to increase accuracy of an AI model. For example, uh, there are some studies on breast cancer detection where they show that if a human doctor and an AI collaborate together, they increase the accuracy of the results by 85%. It's not nothing, it's really a big number compared to AI alone or human doctor alone. So really collaboration is the key. It's actually good because it means that the best way to use an AI is not to replace a human, but it's to enhance, uh, you know, enhance the abilities of a human. So there is this collaboration factor going on. If you want to know more about that, we have some groups at Microsoft dealing with that. For example, here, fate, fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics in AI, and they have a webinar. It's really cool because this webinar can be taken by everybody in your enterprise if you decide to work uh, with. Uh, AI, and I would recommend that everybody takes it from the CEO all the way down to the cleaning lady because, or, or cleaning men, huh? let's not be sexist here, let's not make any bias or assumption. Uh, everybody should take the, the webinar because it's going to help them detect problems when they arise, okay? Maybe they will hear in the press that something happened and say, oh, that's the firm where I'm working, what happened? And then they, they will be able to do that. So it's quite important. Uh, you need to be transparent. If you want to know more about the topics of AI and ethics, I did actually record a one hour session about that. This is here, the location uh, where you can go. It's on YouTube and uh, you have here a full hour dedicated to AI and ethics. Hopefully that can be useful for you.